Live streaming is on. All right. We're live. We're live on Monero Talk with Lucas. Uh, what, do you, what's the last name? Are you just going by Lucas or? My name's Lucas Fodman. Lucas Fodman. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, you, so you made quite a splash in the Monero community a few weeks ago. Um, you came on Reddit and you you posted. Are, are you breaking up? No, no. Breaking, okay. On, yeah. uh, you put up a post on how you hacked together or programmed, created, uh, invented a Monero mixer of sorts that uses exchanges uh, to allow people to essentially – uh, mix their coins, or I guess, or or change the, any coin essentially into Monero uh, without KYC AML um, using exchanges. Is that is that a is that a fair uh, accurate description of the of the yeah. product you built? Yeah, I think that's accurate. So I I really wasn't expecting such a reaction on Reddit. Uh, it was just a project that I was kind of working on on my free time, um, but people really seemed to enjoy it. So uh, what it is is it's a mixer in the sense that the concept is the same, that the coins you deposit and the coins you withdraw are not traceable to each other. But the way that it works is obviously very different than a traditional mixer. And that your coin, say a Bitcoin mixer, like the Wasabi wallet, which for many reasons we know doesn't fully work, uh, your coins would be sent to a variety of other Bitcoin addresses. Whereas with Monero mixer, your Bitcoin, for example, would be converted to Monero, then back to Bitcoin or the currency of your choice. And that's what provides the anonymity. It's the Monero's a privacy protocol and fungibility that does it. Right. And that's so I mean that and that's happening on uh, exchanges that don't require KYC AML, right? So it's like what's happening on the on the back end, so to speak, is your your coin, whatever it is, Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever it may be, is essentially getting sent to one of these exchanges getting exchanged into Monero and then right. getting exchanged back out into whatever coin you want and sent back to you? That's right. So when you generate a deposit address for any coin that's not Monero, what it does is it shows you first a list of all the exchanges that have that coin. Then it ranks those coins by which exchange will provide you the best rate at a given time. And when you actually create a deposit, the address that is shown is an address that sends your coins to the exchange, and then the exchange then sends Monero to your wallet. Very cool. So, uh, how how'd you build this thing? Um, so it was kind of an interesting process. I was actually starting it when I was first learning Bash and Python, um, and so initially, what I was looking at was a program called MorphScript, which does part of what Monero Mixer does in the sense that it allows you to make a transaction with Morph Token without using JavaScript. But what it didn't do is have the ability to actually send it to your wallet so the user would still have to enter a wallet address after they had gone through the process of creating a Monero wallet. And so I, I was looking at this program MorphScript and I thought, well, if I combined this with the Monero wallet software and feed the addresses from the wallet software to MorphScript, essentially, then it would allow the process to happen without the user having to use the terminal interface to do all this manually. Very cool. And so, yeah, effectively, what's the difference between using this and using something like uh, Morph token, um, Morph or... Um, you know, one of these other services that allow you to, you know, exchange between coins without KYC AML? What's the... Well, so the big difference uh, is that you don't have to use JavaScript, which mm -hmm. makes it so that the process itself is a lot less vulnerable to all sorts of attacks that can happen with JavaScript, like cross-site scripting, for example. That is no longer an issue. And the other difference is that it's just simply easier to do. The user doesn't have to go through the process of generating their own wallet and uh, getting it set up to work over Tor. And they don't have to actually go through that whole process of facilitating the exchange. From their perspective, they just see an address that they deposit to, and all of a sudden their Monero wallet receives Monero. 
Right, right. No, but how about like morph token? It's you know the service morph token. Yes, yes. It, it, it you, Monero Mixer uses morph token, Godex.io, and XMR.to. Those are the three exchanges. Oh, that's one of the exchange. So yeah. I guess so. I guess what I'm saying is, why not just use morph token at that point, and then just go in, send your right? Because doesn't aren't you essentially achieving the same thing at that point, or no? What am I? Also, if you access morph token's website, then you're vulnerable to the JavaScript issues that come up with because of the fact that their website uh, okay yeah. okay okay so that, that's the key the key point I, i'm missing which i guess it's an important important point to make because others might be missing that as well okay so yeah, so yeah, the, that is a huge factor okay so, sorry sorry i, I missed that um that yeah. that's it that's interesting okay so huh very cool. Are are you do you, are you seeing a lot of use? Do you know how much use you're seeing, or is it oh, hard yeah, to? Uh... I don't know how much anyone is doing anything because obviously I don't take any data from this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am getting a few about I don't know, two to five, maybe ten people a day asking me questions about different, like oh, what do I type here, or does this really work? Little things like that. So that indicator tells me that people do seem to be using it. And right, yeah. What um, okay, did so and it's just it's open source, so it's it's kind of been verified in that respect. So people trust that you aren't actually uh, you know, taking their data or whatever, or or seeing what they're doing. How what how how do we know that that's not happening? So yeah, it, it's entirely open source. Um, all of the scripts that I wrote, they're up on the GitHub, and anyone can obviously read them. The actual wallet files, they are downloaded directly from getmonero.org. So people kind of have to trust Monero and then their own ability to read the code. Um, but I, myself, am not putting out any compiled binaries. And so everything that they're actually running is readable in the code that I posted. Okay. And so has the community taken a look at it? Do you know? Has there been um, feedback? Or Yeah. So on Reddit, um, as far as I can tell from reading other threads where people were discussing it, uh, I saw one user mention that I think uh, DSC, who is, an ex, uh, uh, who is a Monero contributor, uh, had looked through the entire code, made sure that there's nothing malicious. He actually helped me uh, improve some of the some of the backend things to make it even more secure, specifically the adding uh, randomized user agents to all the Python requests. Um, and so I know that he's read it for sure, and I assume that others have, but no, no one has formally gone through and checked through and gave me any official sort of review of it. Okay. So I guess I guess that's something you, you would hope that somebody would do, right? So kind of we would give it more validity and allow the community to verify and trust it? Yeah, my thinking is that if there was any obvious malicious code or any like security things that I just didn't think of, that someone else would have noticed that and would have brought it to my attention. Uh, there was some criticism with my coding style, for example. Um, and I assume that if someone were to look and notice issues with my style, they probably would have also noticed those other issues too. I assume that if someone were to look and notice different Sorry issues with my style, they probably would have. Uh, so yeah, I don't really know what kind of processes exist for getting a sort of audit done, but uh, I would be happy to have anyone who would do that do it. Yeah, I think that's just calling out to the community, and I guess once it starts to get used enough, somebody will will step up and you know take a take a hard look at it. Yeah. So uh, what is your background? So uh, you, you kind of came out of nowhere and just started uh, building uh, Monero-related um, tools and, and services. Why, why? Why Monero? And how did you even learn how to do this? Where, um, so uh, I took, I'm just started my third year of uh, school at University of Michigan. I had taken two years of computer science. Uh, right now I'm trying to transition into information science. Um, but that's kind of where my programming background came from uh, was computer science schooling and also just personal projects and then how i got into monero specifically uh so my dad a few years ago when i was in high school he was one of the relatively early investors in ethereum and so through seeing his success with ethereum i 
got into kind of the whole crypto world and seeing about just learning about cryptocurrencies. And then when I heard about Monero and the fungible nature of it and how it actually truly provided anonymous transactions, I immediately wanted to learn more about specifically Monero. And so that's kind of where I got this idea, which is that I thought that any currency should be able to be transacted with the same privacy level as Monero. Okay. So is that, is that kind of your coin of choice right now? Have you, are you a Monero advocate? Only. Yeah. So I, I don't hold any other currencies just because I don't gen genuinely think they're going to go up. I really do believe that in the future Monero will skyrocket once other people become aware of its obviously better privacy features, fungible nature, everything else that's great about it. Right, so, right. Yeah, right. My money. And then so like how about your dad? So he, so he started with Monero or he, he I mean with, with uh, Ethereum or he started with Bitcoin? Um, as far as I know, he started with Ethereum. I oh, think wow. he did do some Bitcoin trading as well, but I'm, I'm not sure. And so how is, has his uh, view of the, you know, uh, atmosphere, uh, environment changed or is he still like a pure Ethereum person? And uh, has he shifted his viewpoint at all? I would say that he wasn't ever a pure Ethereum person. He was a pure trying to make money person with his okay. to invest in cryptocurrency. Um, and so really it was just an introduction to the world of cryptocurrency as a whole, not specifically Ethereum. And so right. now he's totally out of crypto uh, after the big Bitcoin burst a couple of years ago. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of where it all started. <laughs> Very cool. Do you guys do you guys like debate you and your dad on like kind of like, uh, you know, the you know, where you see the space going and yeah, all, uh, all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. We both uh, have very differing views on whether or not cryptocurrency will be something of the future in 20 years from now. He thinks that it's going to be a fad and will go away. I totally disagree with that. Really? But even though even though he got into Ethereum pretty early, he still thinks it, it was even at that time he thought that or it's something or he became jaded after the, the bubble popping? You know, I think that the bubble really did have an effect on his opinion. Um, because after that point, I remember him saying it's just a bubble and that it's not really built on anything, which obviously is not true. But I think that the speculative nature of why cryptocurrencies move at times really shocked him because it's so different than what he's used to. And since then, I think that he has just been out. Yeah, there, yeah there's, there's probably a lot of people that uh, also share that viewpoint, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I can see the logic to it, but I also disagree with it still. Yeah. So uh, what do you think? What's, the, uh, what's next for the project? What do you, is it, is it, is it actively being worked on? Um, are there always things to be done? Do you have like a larger vision for what it can be? So yeah, the first... Uh, sort of update was mostly just bug fixes, fixing little issues with user error and uh, issues that would occur when Godex disabled a certain coin, for example. Um, but in the future, I have a bunch of different things in mind for the project. What I'd like to do is have all of the non-KYC exchanges represented so that people can know that they are getting the best result or best rate given all of the possible options or on KYC exchanges. Um, and the next thing I want to do is also uh, implement the ability to withdraw your balance, not purely as crypto, but also as gift cards. And the way that I imagine that working is in the same way that Monero Mixer currently is able to create an XMR.TO transaction and send an exact amount in Bitcoin. What would happen is that I would first create an order with BitRefill, which is a gift card purchasing service where you can purchase gift cards with Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever. And then the bit refill orders deposit address would be used to create an XMR.TO order, which would then be paid by the user's Monero wallet. And so from the user perspective, they would hit withdraw and then it would generate a gift card code. Mm. So you're basically saying, so an anonymous way to to essentially purchase a gift card is what it what it yeah. becomes at the end yeah. of the day. So it, it's yeah, 
basically it's in the same way that right now I'm doing a non-JavaScript implementation of Morph Token. It would be a non-JavaScript implementation of BitRefill to allow those gift cards to be purchased. And then the actual transaction would be paid by XMR.to. Very cool. Um, and then finally, I want to make a GUI for it eventually so that users aren't scared by the terminal. Um, and Because right now, uh, it's terminal-based, but there are Xenity dialogues so that you're not actually typing into the terminal. And when people, you're selecting coins, you can use a checklist and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think that the terminal itself scares away a lot of people. And so GUI and those features are really the next things that I see for this project. Very cool. How about uh, how about like BISC? Do you have you ever do you ever use BISC? I've never personally used BISC. No, but uh, I've heard good things about it. And what do you see as BISC being in kind of comparison to this in terms of like use case or why you would use one versus the other? Well, um, so, sorry, did I cut you off? No, go ahead. So my understanding of BISC, correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's an exchange where the base currency is Bitcoin, and so. Is that is that correct? Uh, yeah, believe so. Yep, and then you could yeah you could exchange from you know turn your Bitcoin into Monero, uh, you know, anonymously through this decentralized exchange, so to so to speak. Right. So then Monero Mixer essentially works in the same way as Bisc. However, it's not using Bitcoin as the primary currency. The primary currency is Monero, which mm -hmm. provides the fungibility that anonymizes the final output. Right. And, and so, and it's also comparing rates from multiple exchanges so that the user's always getting the best price for whatever coin or coins they're looking to deposit or withdraw. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's probably also cheaper as well, right? So I think, I don't, I don't know what the exchange rates are on BISC. Yeah, I, I, I think I think there's a probably a premium compared to uh, other other exchanges yeah i would assume that uh at least for non-kyc exchanges i'm not sure exactly what this uh kyc policies look like but for comparing the non-kyc exchanges xmr.to godex and morph token the user will always get the best rate mm -hmm. well yeah yeah so bisc is non-kyc it's uh you know it's a decentralized exchange um so there you know there there's no there's no entity to kyc aml2 okay you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I suppose the use case would be fairly similar. However, Monero Mixer would provide just a greater level of anonymity because of the fact that the to connect to BISC, I, I'm not sure if they have a Tor site or a, a dot onion site or not. But if the user wasn't connecting to BISC over Tor, then their IP address and other metadata would be linked to their BISC transactions and accounts. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've never used it uh, in that way, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how uh, those that are using it are doing it. Um, so this is uh, this is very cool. So are are you looking for people to kind of help you with your with your projects, or are you just a, a one man show? So now? so far, I've been a one man show. Um, I'm very open to having anyone help and contribute. A lot of people have suggested things that they want to do, uh, but no one has actually reached out to me and actually made that happen. So uh, one of the things that someone did was translate it to Russian. So there is a Russian version of it, which is kind of cool. But really, other than that, I have been a one man show on this project. Very cool, man. Um, yeah, I wish you wish you all the best. Keep keep growing it. Uh, stay in touch with the community. Uh, I'm sure people will start to reach out uh, once they see how invested you are and the progress you're making. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, let's let's go back to the background again a little bit. So you're currently, I'm sorry, you said you're currently studying. You're in your third year, you said? Yeah, or? I just started my junior year three, two days ago. Okay. And you're studying computer science or? I'm currently enrolled in computer science, but I'd like to switch to information science to do UX design. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Very cool, man. So, what, what's what's kind of the scene in in your your age group of people, you know, in college that are like in computer science that field? Are are what what would you say the uh, you know kind of what the the thinking is among 
among those types of people? Are they are they thinking Bitcoin? Are they thinking Monero? Are they not even thinking about crypto? It was crypto yesterday's news? Um, so, are you are you like unique among your peers, or are there a lot of computer scientists uh, your age that you know of that are kind of interested in it and delving into it? Uh, so I would say I am fairly unique in that the majority of my peers do not involve themselves in crypto, even those who are in computer science. Um, I do have friends who are in the field, and even those guys are not familiar with Monero. They, when I tried to explain to them this project, they first said, oh, so it's like a mixer, and then secondly said, what's Monero? So I would say that uh, getting Monero more known and represented with young people would be something that could really contribute to the community. Yeah, about crypto in general. Are they interested in cryptocurrency in general, or it's the, they saw it as kind of like a ship that's already sailed or something? Uh, I, I guess there is kind of a ship that's already sailed sentiment in that a lot of people that I've talked to are saying, oh, well, I missed that big boom a few years ago, so now there's no point. Yeah. Um, and I guess some people use it for I don't know, whatever transaction they want to perceive as being anonymous, but since they're using Bitcoin, we both know that it's truly not anonymous. So I guess privacy is the biggest use case that I've seen for crypto here at the University of Michigan, at least. Oh, wow. People actually using it for that purpose. Yes. Uh, I have a friend. I don't can't even I don't even know what he was doing, but he needed to send a private transaction. Uh, and he thought that he could do that with Bitcoin. And so I helped him use Monero Mixer to actually do that correctly. Mm -hmm. Would you have any thoughts on what you think like might be kind of the killer app uh, for, you know, taking taking some of these things mainstream, you know, uh, getting making Monero mainstream? Or do you, do you have an opinion there on how you see the space growing and evolving into more of a, uh, you know, fulfilling the the ultimate vision of what we think Monero is, which is digital cash. Do you have any opinion there on how we on how it gets there? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest difference between Monero and cash is that you can spend cash anywhere, whereas Monero is still relatively difficult to spend compared to other cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the biggest thing should just be making or getting more merchants or whoever, whatever services accept crypto to accept Monero as well. And mm -hmm. that's counterproductive to the project that I'm working on because of the fact that it's really only necessary because everyone doesn't accept Monero, but I still think that would be a better version of the crypto world if you could spend Monero just as easily as you could spend Bitcoin. Right, okay. Um, yeah, do you have any uh, thoughts on how you see that happening? Are you thinking about ideas in that, in that area as well, or you think that's just general time and adoption? Uh, really, I think it's time and adoption. How that would be implemented, I don't have any ideas on. Yeah, all right. Figure, figure. I pick your pick your brain. You never know. Maybe maybe you're onto yeah. something big. <laughs> maybe maybe one day. Do you ever? So we we talked about morph. So how about XMR dot dot two o? So that you you use that as well. That's yes. So okay. XMR .co is not a deposit option because they only provide exchanges from Monero to Bitcoin, not vice versa. Right. But they are a withdrawal option. So what they allow is for the user to send an exact amount in Bitcoin, uh, unlike Godex or Morph token, where the user specifies the amount in Monero and then gets a rough amount of Bitcoin based on the transaction. Rate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that is really what's unique about XMR.to and that they let you specify the output amount exactly. So it's just for making payments usually. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, man, it's, I, I was just excited to see that you kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, you, you're you obviously interested in Monero. Uh, you took the time to build something for the community, uh, which which kind of shows that Monero uh, is, is pulling in, uh, you know, people that want to actually build things and understand the vision of it. Uh, it's just nice to see that it's actually motivating young people such as yourself. Like no, nobody's paying you to do this. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah you're, you know, you just, you just, you saw a need and you're just trying to help uh, 
build up the ecosystem and you took the time, put in the effort and you actually did it. It's just, uh, yeah. Good job, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, really the goal here is to make it easier for people to use Monero to anonymize their transactions. Um, yes. I'm not familiar, I don't know if you know how difficult it used to be to set up a Monero wallet on Tails or Ronix. It used to require reading a relatively long guide and entering a variety of commands manually that I think that just the most people wouldn't want to take the time to do. Mm -hmm. And so really what the program does is it facilitates the operation performing your trans calculating the optimal rate, all of those steps, it just does it for you. And it's really simplifying a process, not actually creating a new process. Right, so it's it's making it user friendly, allowing you to use Monero for its intended purpose, um, no matter what coin you're using, uh, allowing you to kind of seamlessly go in and out of Monero for purposes of making transactions. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that's I think that's a great thing. Yeah, I, I personally, I mean, I'm I'm not a super technical person. I was always, uh, you know, I was into Bitcoin, and then I I I, I I fell into or discovered Monero because of what I saw as Bitcoin's shortcomings. Uh, and even when I did, I wasn't really comfortable or really, really did I feel capable to with, with using it the right way. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually even relied on other people more technical than, than me at the time to kind of hold my Monero for me. Really? Uh, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to run, you know, I just didn't want to get involved in, you know, running a full node on my computer or using the client or I'm just not, I'm, I'm really more of the guy who's like, you know, waiting for the app on my phone. And that's actually, so when, when Cake Wallet came out, that was kind of like a big thing breakthrough for me. I was like, oh, now I could finally, you know, hold Monero in a very simple way on my, mm -hmm. you know, on my iPhone um, instead of, you know, or holding it on a paper wallet. Now I could actually hold it, use it in a simple way. So yeah, yeah I totally agree with you. That was, that was kind of a, I, I think a big barrier for Monero for quite some time, but I think that's, I think that's changing. I think that's coming along pretty nicely. Right. I agree. I, I think that for a typical operating system like Mac OS or Windows, the, the GUI and command line interface have been relatively easy to use for specifically Tails and Wonix because of the uh, because of the firewalls in place with both of their operating systems and the fact that all of the network connections are have to be sent through Tor. Setting it up was just more difficult, and so it really was meant to combat that problem first of all and make it so that it's one step. The user literally just copies and pastes a single line of code, and the rest is all through simple prompts, no typing of any kind, no worrying about what daemon address to use or uh, mm -hmm. or socks, any of those things that just are a little bit of extra effort, they, they no longer have to be done. Do you see, uh, you know, your your application uh, potentially being integrated into, uh, you know, existing wallets and things like that? Would that, would that ever make sense? Uh, I think it is absolutely could in the sense, or I guess the idea could, maybe not my actual code, because what it does is it does everything through the command line interface of Monero and bash commands as if the user was actually just typing those commands. And so uh, the technical side of things would be a little different, but the ability to deposit or withdraw any currency through an exchange to your wallet, I think could absolutely be implemented in the core Monero software or other wallets like Cake Wallet, for example, they already have the ability to withdraw via XMR.TO mm -hmm. uh, implemented into their wallet. The difference is that their wallet does not use uh, Tor, as far as I know, um, and what that does is it makes it so that both when the output transaction is sent to the remote node that the user is using, their IP address could be recorded. And then also on when they're actually making the exchange with XMR.TO, their IP address is also not hidden as well. So mm. the Well, I, I know you could like run a VPN on your phone and then run open up cake and use it in that way. Is that would that accomplish uh, or overcome what you're talking about or not necessarily? Um, I, as far as I know, I think that it would. However, 
there may be some uh, potential possibility of a DNS leak, depending on what VPN the user is using. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a little bit beyond my level of technicality at this point. So I can't say. <laughs> All right, man. Um, yeah, th you know, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, would love to uh, get an update as you proceed, uh, especially on these, some of these other ideas you're talking about. Um, anything else you want to talk about in terms of Monero? And what, what's your what's your current take on on Monero? Let's say you know uh, where it stands versus other coins. I know I know you obviously you you sound like you're a, a Monero believer for all the right reasons. You've you've um, boiled it down to you know. Uh, why you think Monero matters, and I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, but obviously, you know, when you look at the space and you see where we're at, uh, you know, I don't even know where we're ranked against other coins right now. I think maybe we're like number 13 or something. Uh, yeah. Do you have any opinion there as to? I think that in the future, in, I don't know, 20 years, that Monero will be number one, if not number two. I think that Bitcoin has such a lead in terms of market value that it might be hard to breach that but i think that monero eventually will surpass the other cryptocurrencies because of the fact that it just simply provides a greater level of privacy which i hope people will continue to value more into the future um i think that all right and hope hoping that doesn't happen but i think that companies will continue to infringe on people's privacy more so and more so as they get better at doing it. And I think that will make people more and more upset about these infringements on their privacy, which will then make them want to use Monero more so. Um, okay. Couldn't yeah. say it, couldn't say it better myself. Yeah, I kind of see it going down that way as, as well, right? I guess we'll just take time for people to realize uh, the importance of privacy and fungibility. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some people will have to get burnt first um before people start yeah um how about crypto in general like uh do you have an opinion on like uh price and things do you ever think about those things or not really you're just more interested in the fundamentals of the technology and just I, um well i guess i i think about most of the fundamentals of the technology but i do think the price will go up for uh maybe not bitcoin bitcoin might come down in my opinion in the long term but I think that absolutely Monero and other cryptocurrencies will go up simply as more users start to buy them and also more merchants start to accept them. Yeah. So, yeah, really just adoption being the biggest factor that I think will produce results. Right on, man. Couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, I guess I'm going to do a little plug of my own. We just... Uh, we just launched a site called gratuitous.org. Uh, not very technical in any crazy way, uh, but it's a Monero related idea. Uh, it allows you to, you know, it's just, we're basically we're selling coffee. And then when you buy the coffee, you can send tips uh, to the farmers uh, cool. that, that pick the beans for the, for the coffee. Uh, so, you know, not, not super technical in any respect, but trying to kind of, uh, improve uh, adoption through actual real world use. So selling the coffee, obviously selling it for Monero, or you could use whatever, any other crypto or cash. But then the larger idea being that you can send tips uh, with your Monero directly to the farmers. So we've been uh, testing cool. that out. Figured I'd throw that out there. Uh, on the show. Awesome. Yeah, so anybody that wants to, uh, you know, support the concept, please, uh, if, you, if you drink coffee every day, consider buying your coffee uh, through Gratuitous so we could uh, test the idea and try to try to get it up and running. Yeah, what do you, what do you, th what do you think of the concept? We've gotten some good I, feedback. I think that's a very cool concept. I, I've seen a huge success with the Monero tip spot that uh, a Reddit user made, and so it reminds me of that, and I think that people will like it a lot. Yeah, this is really more of a, a real world use case. So it's, you know, you, you get your coffee and then there's a QR code on it. And we hooked up the farmers with their own private keys. Uh, it's from a farm in Brazil. Uh, so it's, yeah, like I said, it's not like a technological breakthrough in any way, but it's just a real world use case uh, for using crypto 
and doing something that you wouldn't be able to do without crypto, right? There's like right. before crypto, there would be no way to send money peer to peer to, you know, a Brazilian farmer. Right. Um, so it w- w- wouldn't be possible. So we're, we're, we're trying to do something that you couldn't do pre crypto. Yeah, I think that more products like that should come out and eventually one day the world will start to adopt crypto and hopefully Monero uh, more so. Yep. All right, Matt. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, once again, you know, uh, I encourage you to, to keep uh, working on your projects. I'm sure you will. Um, and to just communicate with the community as much as you can, because I know uh, they will uh, kind of support you in any way they can, because obviously everybody gets excited when, when somebody is working on something new um, and they try to help in any way they can. Uh, I guess that would be my final question. What do you think, because you being somebody who kind of, like we said, came in here on your own with no funding, just, you know, working uh, because of your belief in a concept. What do you think of that for Monero versus other coins like Zcash, for example, that has, you know, the, the, the developer's reward or founder's reward where they basically can use that funding to pay people to develop things or some of these other coins that have like kind of built in uh, funding mechanisms. What do you think of that approach versus something like Monero where it's really, here's this protocol, it's open source, do with it what, do with it what you want. Nobody's going to pay you to help. Do you think that's, ultimately a detriment to Monero or do you think um, it doesn't really matter or maybe it's even a benefit? I mean, do you have, do you have an, an opinion well, there? I think that it is a benefit because of the fact that it decentralizes things. If there was a pool of money that was, that someone had to decide who would get it, I think that would give one group or person too much power. And I think what's great about the Monero community is that it really truly is decentralized but still together in the sense that everyone is going and working towards the same goals. And so I received a bunch of great personal messages and comments and plenty of really kind feedback that was providing necessary technical assistance, just suggestions and anything else that I needed for this project from the community. And so I I guess if I needed more funding to do this, then maybe that would have been a factor, but for at least for my specific case, funding was not an issue. Um, for bigger projects, maybe something like a community pool of money that everyone gets a vote on ha- and on who gets it and who gets the funding would be something that could work. But it, I really believe that it should remain decentralized and that should be something that never changes. Very cool. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you there as well. Um, I guess the way I look at it too is like Bitcoin, ha- you know, had the same kind of issue, and obviously, uh, it's managed to overcome that. Um, if if the technology works, uh, businesses come and and just try to use it as that technology, and, and they're the ones that that kind of make their their own investments, use their own capital to right. to build on top of the protocol or build things for the protocol so yeah i, I definitely agree with you there but i i want to i want to get your viewpoint seeing that you actually are one of these people that put in your own time and effort yeah i guess but, it would be a little different if i i still get money from my parents and stuff because i'm a college student but yeah. <laughs> if i was uh if i was all on my own maybe i would have a different answer to that question uh, but yeah i think for the most part the community is amazing and has been really supportive of everything that we've done so far Monero, sponsored by uh, parents everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right, man. Uh, Appreciate you coming on. And, yeah, stay in touch. We'd love to have you on again and get get the update. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was really great to be on here. Of course, man. Have a good one. Appreciate it. Take care.